Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Meso Terra Nutrition Series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano Project, and we're back with another Sega Saturn update video because SRG320 updated the Sega Saturn core again, fixing more issues on the GitHub tickets, as well as fixing some of the regressions from the previous core where I told you games that were working previously stopped working. So we're going to go through some of the improvements today, test some new games, and talk about some of the fixed regressions. Before we get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But one game that's seen a lot of bugs and errors fixed up is going to be Mortal Kombat 2. Well, there does seem to be some missing sound effects here and there every once in a while. Last time we talked about this game, it definitely had some sprite issues where there'd be some lines through the sprites, and some of the sprites would not be aligned properly. Now, in actual gameplay, you can see that everything looks, feels, and basically acts like Mortal Kombat 2. Now I'm not saying this is my favorite fighting game of all time, but every time I talk about Mortal Kombat I say I'm happy for those who love it, I've just never really clicked with it. But I will say watching this footage and experiencing the game myself, this does seem to be exactly the game that you would be playing if you were on Sega Saturn. And later in the video I will do a side by side comparison of Mortal Kombat 2, real hardware and the core just for fun. Be aware this core is not finished, so do not make any final judgments based on that comparison, it is just for funsies for lack of a better term. But as you see Mortal Kombat continue to play on your screen again, I really can't find anything in the image whatsoever that makes me think that there's any visual bugs at all. This just seems to be Mortal Kombat 2 playing on the Sega Saturn except it's on Mr. FPJ and I will say at least the backgrounds and the sprites have always had a very good look. I've always loved the look and overall vibe of Mortal Kombat. I've just never really clicked with the 2D game's actual control inputs and I feel like on the Sega Saturn version of the game it doesn't feel as responsive as the arcade version. That's not a critique of the core, it's a talking about the actual poor aspect of things. I've just always felt like this game felt a little muddy in the inputs, but leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. And you'll see here in the background that parallax scrolling of the clouds going by at two different speeds is 100% working and the viewport changes as you actually scroll the screen left and right and you see different parts of the stage. All of the fatality graphics are here and they seem to be good as well. So as far as Mortal Kombat 2 is concerned, it's definitely been fixed up. It's running much better on the core and in about five minutes I will show you that side by side comparison. Now on the regressions fix front, last core Sega Rally was no longer loading and now that is back to working perfectly fine and again I know people get bummed out when there's regressions and things that used to work break but do be very well aware that is how the development process works when you're playing around sometimes you don't 100% know what all of the changes you're doing are going to affect you may fix a bug in three games but break one by fixing that bug until you fix it in a way in which it works across all the different examples of software you would test so something in the previous core whether it was removing things from FPGA to free up space or any of the other bug fixes on VDP1, VDP2, or the CPU side of things could have made Sega Rally stop working. The nice part is SRG320 updated again within like four days, and now you can go right back to playing Sega Rally exactly as you would expect it to. You've got the snack support for analog controllers, you have all of the features, the music, the graphics, the sound, the control, it is just here again, but just be very well aware. The next update could break this game, could break a dozen games, could break 50 games, or break absolutely nothing. Until the core is finalized, always expect regressions, that is how this works, so don't think, oh no, my favorite game stop working that is a bad thing it's just a byproduct of the development process and the more things you break the better you learn and i love there thanks to andy d for this capture he almost made the checkpoint and almost actually got bumped through i would have loved to have seen that i'm actually not sure what happens if you get bumped through with another car so leave me a comment down below and tell me if you know what the result of that is now Grandia here has seen some major improvements graphically as well as speed wise. This game had a tendency to slow down in certain aspects and it can slow down on real hardware as well but the slowdown on the core was more dramatic than the slowdown on real hardware. Now it seems to be about one to one. The music and audio in this game have also gotten better. It's no longer too loud. You don't get really any pops or cracks or whistles. So go ahead and listen for like 35, 45 seconds. I'll be back showing more Grandia and more games on the Sega Saturn Core that just work. Thank you. 
All the sound effects, all the music, everything here in Grandia just seems to be adhering one to one with real hardware. And again, I cannot stress enough just how pretty of a game this is. That isometric viewpoint there, where you have the sprites on top of the 3D aspect, this has held up so incredibly well. And as we go out into the open field, an area that I really haven't shown you of this game in different tests, let's get into a little bit of combat because there were some glitches here as well that seem to be 100% ironed out. Now, of course, Grandia is a very long game, and I haven't heard anyone beat it yet but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened but if you do want to start playing Grandia I might wait for the core to be finished or very further along because it is the type of game you don't want to hit a game breaking bug 15 20 hours in and not be able to complete it but what I'm seeing here just seems to be working like you would expect all of the dithering pseudo transparency all of the sprite work in the battles all of the battle mechanics everything seems to just be working like it would on real hardware and that is impressive stuff and this is one of the best RPGs of all time in my opinion so it's so much fun to see it come over to the core and start working better because again in these areas in town when you would go out to the map you can slow down the engine on real Sega Saturn hardware that is not something that I wouldn't expect but in the previous test of this game we did end up in a situation which the slowdown in certain areas would probably be like 25-30% more dramatic than it would be on real hardware but with the current core it seems to be running speed wise exactly like it should and everything else seems to be working as well and if for some strange reason you've never played Grandia before I can't recommend this game enough if you love a good RPG there is nothing here that's going to make you think it's anything other than a 10 out of 10 game but I promise you a side-by-side -side comparison real hardware in Sega Saturn FPGA core so here it is Saturn on the left and Mr. on the right you can see the color rendition is slightly shifted but that's because one is coming off analog video and one is digital but otherwise the performance the speed the screen cadence everything else seems to look identical here the only real difference is the gameplay because it is two different matches across two different pieces of hardware but this is very promising and I'll start adding some comparisons to every once in a while's video test just to show you guys what these things are doing side by side but tell me down below do you see any negligible difference between the two games I'm assuming the answer is going to be no now another game that's seen a lot of visual improvements as well as some speed improvements is Batman Forever and when I say this game is absolutely hectic I 100% mean it this is running at 100% speed not only in the game but just in some sort of sense of reality in which this is a fever dream level of speed Batman is just sprinting all around the arena every single move there's so many different enemies on screen so many different effects this is just a wild game visually and there's so many different things to see and do and they're all working here on Mr. FPJ again today this is definitely one of those love it or hate him beat em ups though I think it is quite fun and quite good but it has that 90s graphical aesthetic which I think is aged pretty well other people aren't too into it because of this kind of pseudo digitized FMV sprite thing going on here but all of the scaling of the enemies into the screen is working now and last time we took a look at this game a lot of those sprites would end up corrupted as they would start to scale so this is another game that's just seen vast improvements, and it is a ton of fun, especially as a two-player game. So if you never played this one before, definitely check it out. Bring a friend. It's going to be a lot better. But there's so much visual going on in this image. And last time, a lot of the sprites, whether they were scaling or not, would just get corrupted at the edges of the screen. In this capture, I could not find anything that made me think it did anything other than real Sega Saturn hardware performance. This is actually a game that I do not have in my collection. So it's been a very long time since I played it. This also came out on the STV arcade board, which was the way I played it last time. And that's just basically a Sega Saturn with a cartridge, not a CD-ROM drive that ran in arcades. But I had a ton of fun with it as an arcade cabinet, and I have fun with it here as well. And the best part is now I would definitely mark this as playable, because last time we took a look at it, those graphical glitches didn't keep you from finishing the game. It just made you basically focus on what the problems were, less so than actually having fun with it. And again, I mean it when I say it. This game is just absolutely 90s hectic. These Batman movies were definitely not the best of all time, but the games that came out for them are a lot of fun. Believe me, comment down below and tell me what your favorite Batman game is. I would be very curious because there's so many different Batman games to pick from, ranging from some of the best games of all time to absolute junk. But you'll see here as Robin has an absolute heart attack with that power up, we will move on to the next game that has a very similar visual presentation, and that is going to be Temple. 2000. This has also seen a lot of visual bugs fixed and it also has absolutely wild visuals in a completely different way. 
but I will say without a spinner on this game it is a hard version to play but we haven't taken a look at this I don't think in any sort of testing video but it did have some glitches in the visual presentation and now here this just looks like Tempest 2000 running on the Sega Saturn versus the Atari Jaguar and of course it's Tempest 2000 so you know it has some incredible soundtrack so I go ahead and listen to the sound quality for like 30 seconds or so and I'll come back and show you a little bit more Sega Saturn footage but this game has always had an incredible soundtrack and it feels like it's coming across pretty good here on the core so enjoy what You seriously can never go wrong with Tempest 2000 soundtrack or any of the soundtracks of any of the Tempest games. And it's fun to see this running on the Sega Saturn, even if I always think of it as an Atari Jaguar game first and foremost. It's another example of SRG320 going through the issue tickets on GitHub and patching up the core to fix some of these problems. Because for every bug he fixes in one game, it probably assists like a dozen other games that we just don't know have the same bug. It's just because the library is so massive on the Saturn, testing every single thing can be a very very difficult time but we've game over here and that is the test on the current core but SRG 320 is definitely an active development and I can't wait to see what the next core brings hopefully soon we get some light gun support because I really want to take a look at stuff like the house of the dead crypt killer and the other light gun games on original hardware as far as the controls are concerned but if you have any recommendations for testing leave them down below but we are done just remember this is not an update all it's a manual install only see you next time bye bye <laughs>